Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today you join me for hopefully a very interesting and exciting one, and that's because I'm gonna plan on doing a 10 to 80% charge test here in the all new 2026 Hyundai Ionic 9 Calligraphy. Now we are currently on our way to my local or closest Electrify America station, just because it's where I've done all my other charge tests. They have enough stalls, it's usually never full, However, with the new balance charger setup that most, if not all of them have, I'm hoping we do get uh, a window of time here where we can get you know totally full power into this vehicle, at least what it's requesting and see how it does from again, that roughly 10 to 80% window. Now, ambient conditions outside are currently in the low 80s on its way to the upper 80s today. So it is not a uh, cool one or chilly one by any means today, it's actually quite warm. And I did check the Electrify America app before leaving just now, and uh, at least one of the chargers was in use. We're currently at 21% state of charge on the battery, plenty of charge to get there. It's only 17 miles or 20 minutes away. Um, so I'm looking to burn up about 10% or 11% ideally on the drive there, uh, which I think we can do because most of it is interstate. Uh, we got the AC ripping full blast. And I did try to do the battery preconditioning here on the vehicle side, uh, but it says we are in the optimal temperature window to receive full speed. So it's neither too hot nor too cool, although we're probably a little bit on the warmer side of things. Um, but I don't know, 80 degrees might be pretty darn good and pretty darn perfect to uh, get full uh, power the entire charge session. This vehicle should be pretty capable uh, in terms of the new 80, or excuse me, 110.3 kilowatt hour battery pack. And um, yeah, it'll just be interesting to see how this turns out and how this performs and stacks up. If you guys have seen or followed along here on the channel, I have tested the 2025 Ionic 5N. That vehicle did absolutely phenomenal, blew it away, um, 271 kilowatts of peak speed. Uh, that I saw on the unit. And I'm thinking that this one should be fairly close, although it might max out just a little bit uh, lower around that 250, maybe 260. But ultimately, we will have to wait and see. So I will catch up with you guys once we get to the station and hopefully I've burned through enough of the energy out of the battery pack to make this a full 10 to 80. Uh, as Hyundai says, it should be possible in uh, under 30 minutes. So uh, it'll just be interesting to see Hopefully, fingers crossed, conditions work out and we don't have any hiccups. It's an ID4 towing a trailer. Uh, no wonder they're here so long. I was wondering why they were taking forever. So we have just backed into stall number two at 9% state of charge. So pretty bang on if you ask me. I'm gonna go ahead and get the adapter from the front trunk that is included with all uh, NACS or J3400 equipped Hyundai vehicles that they provide. All right, so we are pulling 224 kilowatts. Currently here, just under 20% state of charge. And as you guys saw, I had to move stalls here at the station because I was on charger number two and an F-150 Lightning decided to plug in right as I got over 200 kilowatts and it immediately dropped it down to about 186, 187 or so, which I knew at that point I was splitting power because it already had just exceeded 200 and then dropped down to 187, which really isn't all that bad when you are sharing power between cabinets. So ultimately it means two and four are power shared or balanced and then three and the Chatamo CCS combination or one are gonna be uh, shared here, which is good to know in the future in case I do uh, some additional charging tests that I actually need cabinet three this entire time and not necessarily cabinet number two. But uh, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna format this test now because I did plug in again at 15%. Maybe I'll do a 15 to 80 test, but we're still doing 224 here at looks like 20 low 21 22 percent state of charge which is pretty darn good so uh hopefully the gopro is going to record everything i know it's sitting in the sun here so i'm gonna have to monitor make sure it doesn't shut off 26 percent state of charge 
uh, in just a couple minutes here. But like I said, a little bit of a messy start, but at least at 15%, I am gonna get a clean run. Hopefully, all things considered, assuming somebody doesn't come in and plug on uh, number one here, the CCS Chatmo port. But yeah, pretty impressive and uh, really can't complain. 225 kilowatts, 226. Uh, as the pack voltage increases, so will the charge speed. And it'll be interesting to see if we can get close to that 250 kilowatt mark or not or if it kind of you know, plateaus around 240 or so. So you joined me a couple days later to run through exactly what occurred with the 10 to 80% charge test in this Ionic 9. I've gone second by second with all the video footage I've captured, put all of that charge data into a spreadsheet, and also created a chart or a graph for you guys to see the exact charge curve, which we'll cover here over the next couple minutes. So essentially what happened is I plugged in at 8% state of charge, and uh, started charging, everything was going great. At 10% state of charge, it got up to 204 kilowatts of peak charge speed before an F-150 Lightning owner plugged in on stall number four, which was power shared or balanced with charger number two in which I was currently charging on. So at that point, it ramped down to about 183 kilowatts of peak speed. So that is the power I was getting, sharing power between both of these two vehicles and I stopped the session at 15% and moved over to charger number three to hopefully get you know, a nice clean run and a clean session, and that is exactly what happened luckily. So at 15%, I replugged in, started a new session on the other charger, and it only took about a minute to a minute 20 seconds to ramp all the way up to its peak speed of 220 kilowatts right at 17% state of charge. So from there, it was actually pretty easy to track exactly what happened. As the pack voltage started climbing and getting higher, so did the charge rate. It just slowly started to creep up. So, you know, at 20%, we're doing 222 kilowatts, all the way up basically to 30%, 227. And then once we finally got to, it looks like 60 or 61%, depending on uh, what you want to look at, where it got up to a peak speed of 244 kilowatts indicated by the charger itself. And this was the first big uh, ramp down in the charge curve of the Ionic 9, where it went kind of right back to where it was at 220 to 221. This held steady through 67% state of charge, where it dropped once again to 203 kilowatts. Then at 69% dropped to 183 kilowatts. And then at 72%, once again, uh, dropped down to 164. And then finally, there was an interesting little blip at about 74.5%. It went to 146 before quickly rebounding to about 152 kilowatts, where it held that all the way through right at 80% it finally uh, ticked down to 135 and then actually at 81%, 125 kilowatts. So as usual, right around the 80 to 81% threshold, you're gonna see quite a bit of change or decrease in overall charge rate, which is the case for most other EVs out there. And heck, 125 kilowatts at over 80% really is nothing to uh, shy away from. And it's faster than some EVs can even charge at in their peak speeds. Uh, depending on their uh, battery architecture and things like that. It looks like the unit or the vehicle would have immediately ramped up to its peak rate of like 215 to 220 kilowatts had I not had to unplug and start a new session. So you can kind of connect the dots there, if you will, on the uh, actual charge curve of the vehicle. And it was great to see all the way through 61%. Now, a couple items I do wanna mention in terms of charge rate and all these peak speeds is at 43% state of charge, I actually took a picture of the vehicle's dashboard to see what the charge rate was displaying and it showed 234.5 kilowatts. Now, at that exact same moment on the Electrify America screen, it showed 1.4, 1.5 kilowatt slower speed going into the vehicle itself. So that leads me to believe that about 1.5 kilowatts was being used by the uh, air conditioning system as well as the vehicle's cooling system 
to help keep the battery cool and maintain you know, optimal temperatures. That would mean that the vehicle's display was likely staying 245 to 246 of peak speed, including what was being consumed by the accessories and the additional cooling system. So I did just wanna put that out there. Uh, I've talked with Corbin from the Ionic guy. He of course is doing his own testing with his Ionic 9 press vehicle this week as we speak. And uh, I gave him my data and he'll likely mention it in his video, but I did just wanna mention that all of my data is coming from the Electrify America screen and not the built-in displays on the vehicle because unfortunately it looks like we both had the same mistake in not using the real-time charging information screen on the inside of the vehicle, which is a new feature for the Ionic 9 CCNC system. So it would have been nice to at least compare to see what the vehicle's display was saying versus the EA uh, screen. But nonetheless, at least I have that one data point to say, uh, this is what the vehicle's display was saying, this is what the charger's display was saying, and there really wasn't a huge discrepancy. It took 22.5 minutes to go from 15 to 80%, including the ramp up time to go from zero to peak charge speeds, which was just over one minute, about one minute and 20 seconds to do the full ramp. If you take my first session at you know 8% plugging in, and then replugging in and adding all the time up, it comes to 25 minutes total. Now, Hyundai claims 24 minutes, 10 to 80% is your best case scenario charge time with the Ionic 9. And I have to say, I truly think I got a nearly perfect and ideal charge session had things gone smoothly from 10 to 80%. I got 22 and a half minutes, 15 to 80. Take that for what it's worth and what you believe the actual 10 to 80% time would have been, but I really do think it would have been right at 24, if not 25 worst case scenario. That is basically gonna be it for the uh, 10 to 80% charge test here in the 2026 Hyundai Ionic 9. This charge curve really is quite impressive and I think uh, this is a real winner of a road tripper if you're looking for a quick charging electric vehicle that is fairly efficient, can go fairly long distances between charges and uh, really half hour stops in this sort of um, you know condition is gonna net you 250 to 270 miles of total range. But let me know what you guys think of the results down in the comment section below. Like I said, make sure to stay tuned uh, here on the channel for additional 2026 Ionic 9 content that's already posted and or coming very shortly, as well as the Ionic guy or Corbin's uh, information, all of his efficiency, charge tests, things like that, as we have been messaging back and forth, uh, comparing kind of uh, what we've seen in both the vehicles. And like I said, I gave him my charging data. He completed his charge test just about an hour ago uh, and uh, very interested and looking forward to seeing that as I think we have at least three data points at this point as far as charging curves uh, with three different Ionic 9s. So it'll be pretty cool to see his video on that and seeing how we all did and how uh, uniform or close they did perform. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video and or found it helpful, make sure to hit that like button below, subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to check out that other content. And with all that being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one.